financial advisors and the media make Americans feel like losers because they're not earning the supposed gaudy financial returns touted in their public relations releases. As part of their mind game, Americans are made to feel math challenged, so they feel compelled to hand over money and control. To obtain these selective and unsustainable financial returns, indeed many financial advisors do provide good returns, but over the long run, they're not necessarily noticeably greater than if the investor did it himself. Without an advisor, the investor has total control and sometimes even has a Forest Gump moment in striking it big with an up and percent coming from our niche emerging market. And we've heard countless stories of professional financial advisors going rogue and putting their clients' funds legally in investments that do not match the risk tolerance limits of their clients. Whether you utilize the services of a financial advisor or handle all your investments yourself, the creation of your financial panic room nowadays is of utmost importance. Even if you already have substantial cash in your accounts, you may not be able to access them for several reasons. The first is the possibility of the implementation of a bank holiday in which all financial institutions are closed until the Fed sorts everything out from the economic rubble. Second, even after the banks open, do you really want to be seen at a bank or ATM with many others withdrawing monies? This chaotic environment is the perfect hunting grounds for criminals and the desperate, making you a juicy target. Third, ATX may have run out of cash and establishment may not accept credit cards. And it's not just an economic meltdown that can create this unpleasant scenario, but also a natural disaster or electrical grid power failure, all of which can produce the same results of potential societal anarchy because of a breakdown of services. Keep cash in small denominations like and bills because businesses may not be able to provide change, accept credit cards or are unable to do so because of electronic shutdowns. This cash stash, the amount contingent on the number of people in your household, should last one month for survival necessities like food, medicine, and gas, and whatever the amount you calculate, tack on 20% as contingency for unexpected costs, illegal surge prices by stars. You'd rather pay the extra couple of dollars on a necessity rather than look around farther from your home, which increases the exposure and risk of getting robbed. To capture these expenses accurately, create review and update as needed. A spreadsheet to itemize your basic necessities, including things you may not consider such as purchase of prescription medicines, pet food, laundry detergent, etc. From an internal security perspective, the cash should be divvied up and hidden in several places and preferably in a metal container in case of water damage or fire minimizing the risk that the cash will be rendered useless. The reason is that if there's a home invasion, they would never think that. There are multiple boxes of cash 